Hey, Ayaz, I got a question for you. What's up? Um, the people want to know, what's your nationality? Well, I'm from, I was born in Brooklyn. That's very exciting. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was born in Brooklyn, too. Uh, I, we were trying to guess this for a while. What did you guys guess? What was, all right, what was your guess? Um, my guess was Mexican, so I was way off. Mexican? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm just joking, by the way. <laughs> I, you know, Actor is such a, such a Mexican name. Yeah. You're right. And I as, it's short for agnostic, <laughs> right. of course. <laughs> I couldn't tell if you were serious. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm a little. I know a little bit, okay. But I, I wouldn't guess. I, I wouldn't like, guess yeah, any better. I was like, yeah, you're not a dummy. Yeah. <laughs> My folks are from Pakistan. See, okay. I I was doing that with someone. I said, I think he's Pakistani. Yeah, but see that this Nailed question, it. this question Nailed comes it. around all the time. <laughs> Where are you from? I'm like. Brooklyn. Where yeah, are you really obviously from? Obviously, no one's asking you that. I know. It's like it's weird though. I don't talk to you know white people and go, "Hey, where are you from?" And they're yeah. like, "I'm from Jersey." It's like, right. "No, where are you really from?" Yeah, no, yeah. you don't say that. That's the question you, I've gotten a billion times. And that's times. not the question. That that's not the way to fashion the question. The right way to ask is, "What is your ancestral ethnicity?" I guess that would be the smartest way to do. It, but I've gotten so many bizarre comments and folks who immediately call me their brother they're like oh you're like me and they start talking to me about like their plight in the country and i'm like what i'm like dude i'm i don't know why <laughs> this cabbie's talking to me right now i just need to get to the to the airport yeah and they want to like like bond with me yeah <laughs> it's like i'm it's I'm interesting kind of though where were you raised i was raised in queens so why don't you have an accent because I put it away. I used to just have. Don't act like you can just do that. Well, it's I, not a set school, of car keys. In high school, I started like, I'm like my accent sounds too New York. I got to kind of cut oh, that out. So full. Of it's crap, true, man. Mario. It was far too. <laughs> yeah, right. Bring it back. Bring it. I'm gonna need some beer. Uh, you want it back? Give me some drinks. I'll speak faster so, and I'll speak with a minor accent. So, so, so you trained yourself to have this non-regional. This is the television news style. That is noise. such crap. Noise. Be proud of who you are. I am. That's why people are like you have such a good accent. Where is it from? I'm like nowheresville. It's like yeah, in Vermont. I was asked that question. Did you practice that accent? I'm like a little bit. Yeah, but it's not like so. Do all right, now is there any like at one point did you have like a Pakistani thing going no, on? No, my folks they spoke English pretty well. The only weird things my dad would say is like instead of intestine, he's like intestine. He would just have weird yeah. uh, stressing on certain words, medical words. And I'm like, well, that's about it. I knew he said was saying it wrong, so I never bothered to pick it up. So they don't have accents for the most part. They have the to. older I get, the more I can hear it. Yeah. But I guess when I was growing up, I never heard an accent. I can kind of make it out in your voice. Though. You think you I can, can? I can hear you. You can trying. hear the Pakistani in no, there. No, 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 not the Pakistani. I hear you trying what to cover something up. What you're hearing is me trying to slow down. Oh. Because normally I speak at a much faster rate. You know I don't that. like what you're saying right now. I, I'm, I'm, I'm straight. You don't like it? Offended. You, I'm going to turn this table over if you don't like it. That's what's going to happen, <laughs> man. I don't know. I just have this issue with like people hiding accents. Well, it's, it's been, I see, my accent's been gone for about 20 years. So it's... Okay. That's so, really, so so you grew up in Queens. Grew up in Queens. Where in Queens? South Ozone Park, right by Aqueduct Racetrack and the airport. Yeah, I know exactly where you're at. And you were born in Brooklyn. What hospital? Brookdale Hospital. So we were born in the same hospital. Of course we were born in the same hospital. <laughs> we were born in the same hospital Brooklyn, two years apart. Brooklyn's a very small place, apparently. You, it's not. It's ginormous. You know who else was born in Brooklyn? No. In, this, in Brookdale Hospital? No, I don't. Michael Effing Jordan. So Michael Effing Jordan is not the guy who's playing Johnny Storm in Fantastic Four? Michael B. Jordan? Dude, don't. Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Don't give me this Human Torch crap. You don't know the Human Torch? <laughs> I know who the Human Torch All is. Right. I'm talking about the legendary basketball player. Oh, yes, that's right. That, that, that Michael one. Jordan. All right, F in Jordan, <laughs> yeah. not Jeffrey Jordan, like yeah. I thought his middle name was. That's cool, man. That's weird. We were born in the same hospital. Have you been to that hospital lately? No. Not a great area. No, I have not been. <laughs> not it's, a great it's area. It's been a long time. It's been 32 years since I've been hanging out at that hospital. I'm not even sure. My brother was born there too in '85. I'm not even sure it was a good area then. Nope. Yeah, it's nope. probably bad that back Sketchy. then. Sketchy. And where were you in Ariel? You were born where? Uh, New York Infirmary, in the city, right here in Manhattan. Yeah. Freaking all these all uh, fancy, New man. York brothers. Right uh, yeah. Here. I love well, it. my only reason why I was born in Manhattan is because my dad was a super. I don't don't think we have money. <laughs> yeah, but that's no. I wasn't like assuming that. Why do you do you not want people to assume you have money? No, you can think I have money. Go ahead, but Ariel, the truth is I don't. Anybody who's wearing moose on their sh on their jackets clearly yeah. is usually me. Rolling in the dough, top dollar. Yeah. Did they say, did they say any, that anymore? Rolling in the dough. Rolling in the dough. Yeah, Remember that saying? I think so. Uh, maybe. I, I'll take it. I maybe it's like a Pakistani. <laughs> it's a Pakistani <laughs> thing, definitely. <laughs> All right, it's Tuesday, August nineteenth. Let's start the show.
never getting sick of that theme music, by the way. That is so freaking fantastic. Welcome to the 404 Show. I'm Jeff Bacalar. I'm joined by Ayaz Akhtar. And over there on the board, Mr. Ariel Nunez. Howdy. Born right here in New York, in New York. City. He was born yeah. right in this room, actually. Yeah, right here. In this right borough. Right where you're sitting. His umbilical cord's right over there on the show. <laughs> really That's good. disgusting. <laughs> and it's true. And it's true. And true. Uh, you know what time it is. Ariel Nunez, five topics you can choose from. I'm going to Facebook because Twitter is stupid. All right. Trending right now, Ant-Man. Hmm. Uh, Chris Clue, okay. Carl Edwards, Cleveland Browns, or Pope Francis. Pope Francis always always in the news. Yeah, he's always trending. He's he's a popular guy. He is a super popular guy yeah. with the Jews. I mean the the Christ, the Catholics, the Catholic Church. He's probably popular amongst I many. I think everyone everyone knows who he is. I know who he is. I've I'm gonna go with Ant Man. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Ant Man. The movie starring Paul Rudd, and uh, people don't realize this. Marvel has a, uh, uh, a a superhero named Ant Man. A lot of people don't know that there was a, a superhero named Ant Man. Paul Rudd's playing him, and uh, we now have a first look at what he's going to look like right next to the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, apparently, Ant Man is just like a, a loner who wears a hoodie and a denim jacket. And there you have it. First look, Ant Man, okay. played by Paul Rudd. What was Ant Man's powers? He could grow shrink, and so, he shrink, shrink and grow into an ant. <laughs> he doesn't shrink into an ant. He's about ant sized. So stupid. Or he can become really large. I mean, he's known as Giant Man. Really? Seriously. Man, it's, okay. <laughs> so he has two names. You could you could say anything right now, and I believe <laughs> it's <you>. true though. <laughs> he has two names. That's the thing. yeah. He, he became. When he didn't want to be Ant Man. He'd be Giant Man. Which giant is, guy. What well, you would add G I in front of Ant Man? Giant Man. Get it? No. I, oh, I get it. <laughs> I don't like it, but I uh, get it. Can he carry five times his own weight? Great question. I have no idea what his strength, uh, proportionate, uh, proportionate ability is. What like, is ant? why would you want that ability? It was an accident. <laughs> yeah, I mean, most superhero powers I don't think are, are it accidents. It doesn't work like that. Well, why like, would you what, want it? It's but like, like, what could you do? I guess you could like break into places. It's basically like what else am I doing? Oh, you're oh, a plot girl. device, man. When there's when there's something too small to get through, they're like, hmm, what do we do? It's like when when is when the flash useful? It's like, oh well, you know what? Oh my god, the flash is so useful going at the speed of light. That's it's like super we need useful. something that can only be solved by super speed. Right. Never no. mind super strength or intelligence or anything no, like that. Speed is clearly a benefit. All that aside, being Shrinking tiny down to the size of an ant, not not so sure. You can see why he went by Giant Man a lot more. Yeah. Because it's like, okay, I can get How really big. How big are we talking when Giant size Man? Size of buildings, oh pretty much. Oh, my God. At times, it's, it's kind of like a King Kong thing. God, I'm just thinking mm. about his junk when he's that big. You should think about his wife. <laughs> <laughs> really, what you should be worried about. Who's the wasp, if you guys don't remember? Oh, really? his wife is the wasp. Yes. That's freaking he tried to kill her with bug spray. Right he tried to That's kill her with bug spray. <laughs> Why did he try to kill his wife? It, with bug spray in the Ultimates? It was She's awesome. making this up. I'm not man. making this up. I thought it was one of the craziest <laughs> things I'd read was like Ant-Man losing his mind, or Giant Man, and trying to spray the wasp with bug spray. It's like... I guess it would kill you if you were tiny. You have to shut up about that. This is so stupid. <laughs> yeah. not, this wait. is so dumb. This is the dumbest oh, thing I'm ever. Sorry. I'm sorry. Am I, am I bringing the class of the show down? No, 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 no. It's impossible. No, no, no. It has nothing to do with the class of the show. It has nothing to do with that. You just, just think Ant-Man is dumb. I just think Ant-Man is silly. And I think the bigger uh, t talking point here is how Paul Rudd, in my opinion, I mean, I love him. Mm -hmm. I, who doesn't have a man crush on Paul Rudd? But is he a superhero guy? Could be. Depends on the uh, the way they do this. Is Ant Man a, a comedic? Is it is it like oh, you're you're tiny? He's kind of tortured, so I don't know. Yeah, I, what mm. do you think, Ariel? Right, Paul Rudd's like. Yeah, I would think he would be like. You remember the Tick? Of course. Yeah. So when I heard Ant Man, I'm I thought of the Tick, <laughs> and then I think he would be perfect for something yeah. like the Tick. Who is know? the Tick? Patrick Warburton, right? And the live action one, yeah. 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 That was that was a pretty damn funny show, actually. Yeah. yeah. Hilarious. You know, look at Paul. This is the most serious photo I've ever seen of Paul Rudd. Yeah. It doesn't, the idea that this is the first photo of him, if you just listen to the audio, it's, he's basically in a jacket and a hoodie. Yeah, he does look tortured. And here. he's got a bit of what looks, looks like band-aids on his eyebrow. So like. That's where his antenna grow from. Clearly. <laughs> not so it's nothing argue. to do with an actual ant. No. All right. <laughs> he's not like Spider-Man. Jeez. No, I get it. I that'd, get it. That'd be crazy. That's amazing in a Marvel universe. They're like, well, we have Spider-Man. Could use another insect guy. Well, that's a arachnid versus insect. 
Yes. I'm just going to drive you nuts. Don't even. <laughs> uh, all right, so there you have it. Ant-Man's coming out next year, right? Uh, I think so. I'll see yeah, it just because I have such a freaking man crush on Paul Rudd. Um, all right, so clickbait today was uh, an iPhone story. We're obviously not going to talk about that. But what we are going to talk about is what, Mr. Actar? News of the day. We got, we got a new uh, Android phone, not Android, Windows phone, that is, from HTC. It's the HTC One M8 for Windows. And if you look at this thing, it's basically the hardware of an HTC One M8 running Windows phone. It was a really short presser today. It was like 45 minutes. So they were like, here's the phone. Here's what it does. Go try it out. Right. Uh, I just want to like, get like poll you guys. Do you guys think this is going to make a dent at all? It's beautiful hardware. We got a Windows phone. That's the HTC One M8. Pass or fail? Well, I'm going to say fail just because nobody uh, who, who wants an M8 waited this long. Mm-hmm. Right? And if they do, I mean, I, I just, I know Windows Phone has a dedicated fan base. I get that. They're a really small minority, but they're out there. I mean, so they're, they'll buy this for sure. This is going to be their flagship phone. But it's just irrelevant in the regular, you know, in the real world. Ariel, is this cooler or less uh, or less cool than um, the news of Ant Man? <laughs> I care more about Ant Man, to be honest. For sure, <laughs> me too. <laughs> but I do think that some people will be into it. I think there will be people that are into it, but not like other phones. I'm curious. I want to hear from people. Who are you, Windows Phone people? Like, who are you? What do you do? How did this happen? <laughs> I want to know what circumstance conspired that forced you into a world of Windows Phone. I, I had a Windows Phone once. I had a mogul back in 2008. It was an HTC mogul. Do you remember that phone? Was this a Windows mobile phone? It was a Windows with something else. It, it wasn't this. Okay. It was way back. I don't remember the mogul, though. Uh, and it was terrible. And uh, I want to know who you people are. It, I'm, not, I, I'm sure the phone is fine and it works okay. But in, a, in the world of iOS and Android, it's sort of just like, why, why even... Waste your time. You know, the weird thing is if you look at HTC like Sense, their like regular UI, it looks kind of like the tiled interface of Windows. So like yeah. it kind of looks like a regular M8. Yeah. It could be really confusing. Like, oh, that's the way it looks because that's the way Sense right. UI looks. Right, their UI is, it looks very similar to that tile. It's a nice piece of hardware. I, don't, I think it'll do fine. It's only a hundred bucks with uh-huh. contract. Strange, mm-hmm. strange, very strange to me. But uh, I guess there was enough of a demand for it, right? Something, something happened. Something made the the, the no, people. No, I don't think demand had anything to do with. It. No, your <laughs> HTC was just like, why not? Microsoft's like, we got a contract. Put something together, oh, and that's yeah. probably you're it. due. Yeah, I think it's like, we're due. It's, like it's been like two years. Yeah. Why don't you just reuse one of those? Come Fair on. enough. It's in, it's very strange. Someone needs to do a really long, you know, long form sort of piece on like Windows Phone. Why? Like, what <laughs> is this? How is this Why still is this going happening? On? I mean, you look at, you know, like, I hate to compare it to BlackBerry, but I won't. <laughs> I know. Uh, your eyes I was like, up. no way. I'm just saying, it, but it seems to be just as popular. Like, I feel like the amount of people still using BlackBerry. That might be a, that's a huge slam on Windows. Is it? Yeah. Well, just as popular as BlackBerry. A lot of it doesn't, you know, a lot of it deals with me not caring about it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, may, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe if I played with a Windows phone, I would fall in love and, I and, can't. and be part of the revolution. I can't wait. That's for all not the, happening. I can't wait for all the calls from the public for this one. Yeah, it's going to be fun. <laughs> all the angry Windows phone users or like everyone who calls like, I don't use it. Well, we needed some calls. So here I am pouring a little fuel on that fire. Um, all right. First story that I want to bring up today is, uh, is something called, I'm just going to come out and say it. It's called Titcoin. And here's a Titcoin right here in my hand. That's T-I-T-C-O-I-N, not to be confused with Bitcoin because it is a very different kind of coin. Uh, Titcoin is a digital currency for uh, the pornographic digital world. Okay, how does it work? Like, do you you mine them yourself? You can. Okay. It's kind of weird, and I don't really understand why because I feel like we're at the point now where most people are comfortable paying for pornography if they even do that. I mean, I don't know anyone who does, right? Do you know, like, let's let's have a mature conversation about, about porn. porn. Offline okay? porn. Okay. About, no, what, offline porn? Well, this what? is about downloading this idea, right? Why would you be paying for porn? Why? Okay. So you've, you've already, you're already beyond that. You're paying for porn. Okay. Inexplicably, you're paying for porn, even though you just don't need to. Okay. But you are. So now that you've crossed that line, you're like, okay, I'm going to use a a cryptocurrency, an anonymous digital cryptocurrency to pay for it because the people at Tit, uh, 
<laughs> keep saying Bitcoin <laughs> like I think I'm saying it by accident. <laughs> it's in fact the name. Like you get in trouble. There was nothing, <laughs> like, there was, there was nothing like calling up this link when I'm sitting at my desk and I'm like, okay, is this going to get blocked one by yeah. by corporate? Or well, there's nothing and then wrong. two, it's going to be there. So this is for the interest of science. Can we, I wish <laughs> and we could like zoom in. So this tick, it's funny that they gave me an actual coin. Who's they? The who, people. Who like, gave you this? The people at Titcoin. <laughs> They gave me a physical tip coin. Oh, I'm sorry. It's like a poker chip. <laughs> there it is. Right? It's quite a heavy tip coin. Uh, and it's got a lady on the front. Mm -hmm. You you said in the pre-show, why not just put a boob on it and call well, it I said, a day? Yeah, it just seems like it's it's a circle. Just yeah, um, makes it. finish it off. You yeah, put like a mud flap girl on it. Yeah, there, it looks like a Kappa logo. Remember the cap, that Kappa brand? Anyway, uh, so here it is. And... Apparently, they believe that there is such a demand to be anonymous in the transactions and ongoings of pornography that it needs its own cryptocurrency. Um, so I think, you know, it was developed by a small group of advocates, like I said, who saw that industry. They're saying the adult industry is the perfect conduit for bringing digital currency into the mainstream. I'm pretty sure Bitcoin has transcended that already, mm -hmm. regardless. Uh, they're a team of professionals who've uh, had plenty of experience in digital marketing, and that's sort of the thing. It's you know, it's a little bit, it's a bit of a joke. Well, no kidding with this title. <laughs> yeah, I was able to uh, sniff that out from all the uh, information provided. But there you have it. Look, it's and it's getting coverage. So, do you plan us. on uh, in, uh, increasing the amount of titcoins you have, or is this the only one you will have? Well. Considering this is just a prop and not even worth any real tits. It's not coins. actually tied to anything. <laughs> it's not like an NFC that you can like tap and go like this is. I don't know. I don't know. It's got a Gizmodo pull quote on the side that says, <laughs> "Titcoin is the Bitcoin for porn." Well, yeah, we get. Yeah, that's pretty obvious. Right? Well, no kidding. <laughs> All right. Anyway, I thought it was interesting that titcoin's a thing, and I also want to see how many times you can say tit on the show. I think we've uh... and that counters up to seventy-eight right now. <laughs> so enjoy that. People of the internet. Uh, all right, there you have it. Titcoin, the future. Of what tits. was that name again? Bitcoin? Titcoin. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, he, okay, he, let's go back to movies for a second. This is super interesting. Warner Brothers. Now, you remember the Emily Blunt, Tom Cruise movie, Edge of Tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. I saw the trailers. Looked at a lot it. of people liked it. People who I trust, their opinions of sci-fi. And I like Tom Cruise in sci-fi movies. I don't necessarily like Tom Cruise off camera, but Tom Cruise, I do happen to really respect and like as an actor. Oh, and right. I love his sci-fi stuff. I mean, Minority Report, Report is one of my favorite films ever. So, uh, Warner Brothers releases Edge of Tomorrow. Bombs. Did not do well at the box office. Now, this is one of the first times I can really recall they're rebranding the movie for a Blu-ray Blu release. By rebranding, what do you mean? What are they They're changing different? the name of the movie. To what? To, uh, I believe, they're changing it to Live, Die, Repeat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, so it's weird. Um, there seems to be a, a, a fair bit of confusion over the whole thing, but that's sort of what the, you know, idea is. And if you look at the branding, if you look at the imaging of the poster that you have up there, it's completely different than what they did for the actual, um, for the actual film. Like the whole typeface is different. The way it's being positioned and, and talked about is different. Uh, look, I mean, look, the rating on IMDb is 8.1. That's pretty good. So why would you bother to rebrand it? Because it wasn't a hit? If yeah, that's what the, I think the idea is that they're, that they're sort of reassessing uh, how they're going to deliver this, um, you know, deliver this, this, this movie when it comes out on Blu-ray. And I think we're at a point right now where you can kind of blur that line between a theatrical release and a Blu-ray release or, or VOD release and sort of get away with doing that. Our attention spans are, are miserable, right? So people kind of forgot about um, Edge of Tomorrow already. And they seem to be now. I don't know. This is all out of a Reddit thread, so it could be that people, you know, were sort of, you know, part of the the lore and mystery could be, uh, you know, ground up from this sort of uh, thread that we're that we're referencing. But they do seem like they are making a concerted effort to to change the branding of the film. And I just thought that was interesting. That I, and I don't think I've ever seen that before. I mean, we, I've always seen uh, DVD releases and home theater releases have like different kinds of movie posters, different, different kinds pull of art, quotes, stuff like that. Uh, different, maybe even a different logo yeah. for the, for the thing. Yeah, like, well, like what? Like 
the X Men, right? The X Men logo was different from the when you see the movie posters when they were first released, very different than the one that was released on the uh, the DVDs. It okay, was, it was just a slightly different font. It was just a, a change there uh, when it comes to that kind of look. But when it comes to changing the name of it, I mean, one of the big things about movies in general is all of that freaking advertising money they throw in the beginning, yeah. and they build you this brand. But Edge of Tomorrow is really forgettable. The name. Yeah, Edge of Tomorrow. Yeah, that's live, die, repeat. Sounds pretty neat. Like, what's that? What's that about? So maybe that's what they're thinking. I mean, it's got to be what they're thinking. They from the the box office numbers here at IMDb, they estimate the movie cost 180 million dollars to make, and uh, they only recouped about 100 million of that in the box office. So that's really bad. That's a you know that's a net of negative 80 million dollars, which doesn't doesn't look too good for Warner Brothers. So. You know, in their effort to recoup some of those losses, perhaps you rebrand the whole thing. I People told me this film was great. They said it was amazing. So I'm going to check it out. I, I was planning on doing it anyway uh, because of, of, of the recommendations that I got. But I think it's just very interesting that they're trying to rebrand this after a theatrical release, which I'm not sure has been done uh, in the level of detail that it seems Edge of Tomorrow is getting. Yeah, I'm looking at the description. It says, an officer finds himself caught in a time loop in a war with an alien race. Time loop, live, die, repeat. Sounds about right. Let's do it. Maybe they should have called it that in the first place. Well, I just wonder, know, hindsight's 2020. They're going to bother to have, is this going to be a trend? Do you think we're going to see a lot of like, let's say Godzilla 1998, and they could just call it like, not the 2014 <laughs> Godzilla. They just call it like... I mean, basically, you know, that's that's sort of the thing. I mean, they had a great uh, director attached to it, Doug Lyman, who's done the Bourne movies and a couple other classic films that I that I personally love. I mean, I don't know. Strange, right? I look forward to the, the other tweet movies that we'll see. What's there must that? be other ones. This can't be the first one. It won't be what the last one. What do you think would one. be? Um, I mean, if this does work, they'll all do it. What bombed the box office recently? Idiot. I don't know, but I feel like Sin City's going to bomb. That has a strong enough brand, though. That's yeah, old. But, but that movie, I feel like no... that I've never felt less of a buzz for a movie before. Have you, right? I haven't. I've only noticed like the trailers online. But then again, I don't Very, watch like, regular like, TV anymore. I just feel like all the, the air has been deflated. It's been sucked out of those uh, sales. Let's see, I'm looking at crappy movies. We've got like Jobs with Ashton Kutcher. Yeah, that's a bad movie too. We've got Can't rebrand that. There's no getting around that. Yeah, that's going to be kind of hard to You do. know? Everyone knows what they're getting with that. The Lego movie, that could be rebranded. No, but no, that just, did well, right? I'm just screwing around. Yeah, strange. All right, there you have it. Uh, what do, you, do you have anything for us? Do I have anything other than... I want to get that tourist story. I thought that Let's tourist... get to this tourist story. There's a story running on the verge uh, by Thomas Ricker. And he basically wants people to stop being a tourist. And the concept is, what's a tourist in his mind is pretty much anybody who's constantly, basically living within a four-inch world. That's what he's saying, of taking pictures of everything. And he recounts a, a time where he visited the Mona Lisa. He's like, okay, so people wound up you know, around this tiny painting. They stare at the Mona actual... Mona Lisa's small, right? People turns out it's small. I yeah. didn't realize. I always thought it was like a gigantic kind of thing. Because yeah, he thought it was like Blue Boy, and it's just... A little postcard. I don't know what Blue Boy is. Well, from like Ghostbusters. Okay, then yes. It would no, it's not that big. So it's really tiny. Yeah. And so everybody gets twenty feet out, they take a look at the Mona Lisa, they take a picture, and then they walk away and look at their phone. What? Instead of looking at the actual work that's standing there. And this and Ricker's talking about how basically this has happened to everyone. This is what everyone is doing. They're constantly on their stupid phones instead of I don't know, living. And seeing stuff of their own. I mean, and, it's not exactly the, the the deepest complaint. No, I mean, it's this isn't really. This has been a problem for a while. Okay, so there's like what? How many freaking check-in apps per? Let's say meal. So if, let's say you're having a meal, right? So someone wants, someone wants to take a picture of the of the food you're eating. You got to check into the place you're at. If you're having a drink, you got to check into either like Untapped or some other wine thing. Well, people who do that shit leave the lead these you know shallow lives and whatever. It sucks to be them, but not everyone's doing it. Just like not everyone, not everyone is doing the ice bucket challenge. Not every single person. It does seem like it, but not every single person is doing that. This is just something that pisses me off in general. Like I'm sick I'm and tired you. of sitting around with people who are like, you know what I'm going to do? First thing I'm going to do when I sit down with you to talk to you is first I have. Oh, what's your Twitter name? Oh, at Ayaz. I'm with this person. Let me do this and that and the other thing. It's like, I'm sitting right here. Yeah. 
Would you freaking put that phone away? You got to get new friends, man. I'm working on that. That's why I moved across the country. Yeah. Better people here. You think so? I don't know. Maybe less coverage I'm here. biased. I just, I just need to start going to diners that have like Faraday cages in them. So, right. Just like stop every freaking signal in there. So, just, hey, look, how's it going? See, You're over here. We're, it, 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 we're just going through like a trend right now. It's a fad. I really do believe this. Because I think everything in, in culture is like cyclical or temporary, right? So like we'll get out of this check-in obsession phase. I, do, I think that'll happen. I truly don't and think I think it'll happens. be like chic and in vogue to be detached I think, down the road. I think you got a generation of kids growing up who think this is normal because they basically are sitting there um, and they've got nothing to do. Yeah. And there's like... Yeah, photo, they, photo, they photo, said photo. that about us with like video games and stuff, and it is true. Yeah, people sit around and play video games, and obviously it's led to the, the, the decline of society. Maybe I'm a hopeless optimist, may, which I've never <laughs> said. But maybe, maybe we will evolve out of that culturally. I mean, I don't, I mean, I tweet a lot, or not even. I get yelled at that I don't enough. But, you know, that's my really only sort of consistent, uh, uh, you know, notion of being tethered to the digital world you know i i feel like i you can i feel like it's a it's a balance right you got to balance with it the, what this story makes fun of is just how like everyone's just doing the same goddamn shit over and over again they're going to the leaning tower of pizza and they're pretending that they're leaning on the actual thing they're doing stuff like this they're doing the cliched things that everyone freaking does and how that sort of just like uh waters down the, the 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 idea of living your life, right? I think there's that, and like, this can be solved by technology. I'm gonna like advocate for a really crazy idea. A lot of this crap is far too active to check into anything. You gotta go into a bunch of apps, you gotta click all these buttons or click all these touchscreen buttons. But if this stuff was more passive, like, oh, you automated, to, you mean? Yeah. So like, if you're wearing something like Google Glass or you have something on your wrist that knows where you were when you were, yeah. Like, okay, fine. That way, you're still involved in your life and not like, well, I'm leaning, I'm holding up the tower. It's like, okay. You know you were there. We got a record of it. Let's move on. Because otherwise, I mean, I saw a kid taking a panorama of Central Park. I'm like, this photo has been taken like 8 million times. Yeah. Do you think that you're offering something amazing with your new iPhone panorama? Is there any reason right. you're bothering to do this? Right. Or would you totally forget that you were, sitting, you were standing at a park in the middle of the day? Is that something you think people forget easily? No, I don't. I mean, I, I understand what you're saying, and I sympathize with that because my first you know, gut reaction is to always just be like, put the goddamn phone down, take a breath of fresh air in and, and live your life and understand where you're at. But I think you, like I said, I think there's a balance. I think you can have, I think you can have both things. And this is why I'm an advocate for 4K TVs and 8K TVs because it's almost like reality and I don't even have to go anywhere. <laughs> like forget everybody. That contradicts your entire argument. I said it could be solved by technology. I don't have to go see these people and they could pick, put their phones away. This is a great picture though. This, this is right an here. awesome picture. That they're petting the Leaning Tower pizza? Yeah, I mean, if I knew these people, I'd be like, look at them, they're having a good time. I wouldn't have no problem with it. Composition-wise, it does happen to be a nice photo. Yeah, it's a great picture, man. But but you understand where this article's coming from, though, right? I do, the but I... The of it all. I, I think people, I mean... Like, do you, do you think there's a problem with just, like, every single person trying to achieve the same things as everyone else just to sort of say they did it I mean, and not realize or take it in? Like, you mean not enjoying their environment and just, yes. like, living through pictures? I think there is, but at the same time, it's, it's just let them, man. <laughs> like, you do you, let them do them. Like, it doesn't really, it doesn't affect my life when I when people are taking pictures. Like, right. just let them. I have a lot of friends that do it. Yeah. It gets annoying sometimes, but it at the end of the day, I have a roof over my head, man. It's not affecting me. You know what I mean? Like, it's very, not that big of a deal. You have a, you have a very nice and a mature opinion on this, but when somebody's <laughs> flashing a stupid flash by your head and you're trying to watch a show and they don't know how to turn off the flash on their camera because they need to document the whole freaking thing, it does get irritating. You're like, yeah. I'm trying to watch that thing over there. And then boom, boom, Yeah, boom, I've been boom. in similar situations where I'm at like a sports game or, or some sort of live event. And the prick in front of me won't put his hands down because he's taping the entire concert. But they will watch all the time, right? Right. And they'll watch because the sound quality on that's going to be fantastic. amazing. Like <laughs> Stuff like that pisses me off. I can for see sure. that. I can see that. I'm just saying, people get aware of this. They're not going to change, but why not bitch about it when yeah, I can? Yeah, what are we doing? I don't even know what we're doing anymore. No. Like as a, as a world. Where are we going and why? Mexico. Uh, well, here. at least there's... I hear I'm from there. At least there's... <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, all right, we're actually running out of time. I did want to talk about a few other stories, but maybe we'll get to that tomorrow because we will be having a show tomorrow. For now, let's get to a few calls from the public that I was not able to get to on uh, Friday. Calls from public time. Time to show the love. Go. 866-404-CNET. So I got a, an LG G3 and um, I was complaining about the resolution because I think it's just kind of overkill. Right. Too much resolution. Yeah. How crazy that is. No, but like I, I maintain that if it had like a 1080p resolution, uh, the battery would last longer instead of 1440p. Fair I mean, enough. that's not stupid. That's like a logical sort of conclusion. I've had screen side by side. I don't see much of a difference. So um, Gary called in and said, well, here's why you might want to uh, hold on to that high-res phone. Hey, Jets, this is uh, Olympia from Gary. On show 1536, you were talking about the LG G3's resolution being insane and not knowing why anyone would need that crazy resolution. And uh, one reason is uh, cardboard. If you have Google Cardboard and you have the camera right up to your face with the lenses, the G, G3 looks awesome. So if you've got a G3, check out Google Cardboard. And that's one of the reasons you might want insane, crazy resolution. Thanks. All right. That was a, that was a good call, Gary, and I, I, I appreciate you taking the time. But if that's the best answer for why a G3 needs that high res for a do-it-yourself 3D cardboard head visor thing. I'm not feeling that, man. You don't enjoy like crisp resolution when you're reading stuff on there. I mean, yeah, it like looks, looking at paper. It looks good, but a 1080p phone did the same thing for me. In theory, yes. Yeah, it's but, like I after mean, a while, you know, your your eyes can't tell the difference, and that's what I was getting. So when you do this VR book reading, which I'm expecting you will be doing, <laughs> that's doing, that's, that's how it'll go, and that's crazy. Like, if that's the best reason, that's crazy. Come on. There's got to be a, another... Be- I mean, like, the phone comes preloaded with stuff in 1440p, and I'm like, wow, that looks great. And then I, like, move on with my life because it's stupid. Okay, so we should downgrade you to, like, a Moto X or something. No, It'd I'm just saying, I wish, the, I wish the screen... The screen size is fine. I like it. It's big, but I don't need that resolution. It's stupid. But thanks for the call, Gary. Uh, James from San Diego... Uh, wants to just chime in real quick. What's going on, James? Hey, guys. It's uh, San Diego from James. Uh, sorry to see Justin go. I met you guys at Comic-Con. You guys are awesome together. But uh, I have is also pretty awesome, too. Well, there you go, dude. Your first official endorsement. No, I'm kidding. We've had plenty of people call up. <laughs> this is the first official one. All the other ones were unofficial, and they were paid for. Right. This one is This is the first organic... One. Yes. Uh, uh, you know, your tit coins in the mail. And her, yeah, <laughs> it is. I can't stop holding on to this thing. It's kind of like. I know you're fondling it. It's a it, coping man. device. <laughs> this is my totem. I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> it's my totem. That's what I'm going to do. It's I'm my leave totem. That. I'm just going <laughs> to. <laughs> okay. You like it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> finally, this dude, I feel so bad for. Everyone knows about the PT thing. I really oh, yeah. about it. Right, right. Uh, the game that. Honestly, is is currently sitting pretty at number eight in game of the in in the top ten PT games. Is? Yeah, dude, I'm doing it. Unless something else, unless like a bunch of games knock it out, I'm gonna do it. This playable trailer. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Just check it. Anyway, this dude, <laughs> I feel so bad. This dude really caused his wife some stress playing this game. Listen to this story. Hey guys, this is Professor Jeff from Elkhart. I was calling because you guys talked about the PT demo the other day on PlayStation 4, and if I sound tired, that's because it's so terrifying. My wife sat up crying until 6 in the morning because she watched this play. <laughs> I was in the last hallway, hmm. and uh, something happened that I haven't really found anywhere else where Lisa decided to stand up in the bathroom and start shaking endlessly. Uh, spoiler warning, I guess, but... Uh, Anyway, she started screaming, attacked us, and uh, it was so terrifying. My wife cried until 6.30 in the morning and uh, kept me awake all night. Anyways, thought I'd share my experience with it. Love the show. Keep up the good work. Yes, yeah, so uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're going to have to update <laughs> your sorry. Pete. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> update your article of PT is pure mar- a video game marketing genius. Yeah, like, maybe not unless, so much. <laughs> unless it causes your wife to crack and start crying you in know the bathroom. What? 
It's it's so funny because I had that happen the first night I played it too. You like went crying I, to the bathroom. I didn't cry, but I did not sleep very well. Okay. And uh, my wife did not either. Um, little update on that whole thing though. So people think they figured it out. Remember, there was the whole. It's like, a repeatable thing. You can actually. Well, get to the so end? believe it or not, part of it is that you broadcast it on Twitch. Oh, that's that's kind of lame. Oh, uh, is that lame or awesome? Well, that's. Brilliant marketing yeah. still. It absolutely is brilliant from it's, the marketing part. And the program that they think it's either that mm -hmm. or it's like talking into the game with a headset. Okay, that sounds about right. Because yeah. you're, you're that's the one that people seem to be able to replicate. Cool. So now It's wacky. Go play it. Seriously. I, just don't play it at night. I guess play it like during the day. And don't play it, I would say, at least three hours before you go to bed. So you're advocating people ditch work. Like do yeah, this at 12 o'clock. on like a Saturday or Sunday or <laughs> whenever you're off. Good. I'm just saying, it's it's dangerous. It's super dangerous. Player, be warned. <laughs> I'm already scared. I'm not going to play it, man. <laughs> you, you don't have a PS4, but you should still come over and play it with me. Oh, man, I'm scared. Don't be scared. <laughs> Ariel's already crying in the bathroom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's going to no. do it. That will do it for us today. 866-404-CNET is the number you can call. Shoot us an email, the 404 at CNET.com. Uh, we are going to be back tomorrow yep. with a brand new show. Uh, we'll have a rerun on Thursday, and then Friday, Steve Guttenberg returns. The audio file? The, uh, no. He, he's the Filiac? audio filiac. Filiac. I'm like, no. Yeah. Right. Yeah, don't worry. He, not, not the police academy guy? No. <laughs> <laughs> You're the first person to make that joke, though. <laughs> no <pretty> way. <laughs> There's no way. It's pretty good, I as. <laughs> pretty good there, buddy. Thank you. Um, so yeah, follow us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Reddit back here tomorrow. Until then, I'm Jeff Bacalar. I'm Maya Zakhtar. I'm Ariel Nunez. This has been the 404 Show High Tech Low Brow. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Later.